Hello everybody. Hello YouTube. Hello art history enthusiasts and visual culture aficionados. It's me again. Miss Sam. And I'm back with yet another video. Yep. I got another one. Um, today, this evening, this afternoon, this morning, whenever you're watching this, it really doesn't matter. Uh, what am I doing today? I am doing part 16 of my Shining series uh, that I've decided to call Understanding the Shining. Um, we're going to get through, we're going to finish the scene in the Colorado Lounge with Jack and Wendy. And then we're going to move on to some other stuff. And I'm just going to talk it through like I always do. And the reason I was so kind of in a hurry to get through with part 16 is because I want to finally get to my, what I think is going to be a pretty big video. I don't know, maybe, um, you know, maybe, maybe it'll, it's not as awesome as I think it's going to be, you know, that's happened before, but in my mind, I can't wait. I really, 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 really just can't wait to show you what I believe that I have discovered. Okay. Um, and I can't do that before I get through part 16 of this Understanding the Shining series. So here we go, y'all. Here we go. Um, you know, I hope you're all doing good. I'm doing okay. It's it's not too hot. No, it's not hot at all here in Southern California. It's about like maybe 60 degrees outside right now. And tomorrow's May 1st. <laughs> I mean, depending on like what, what version of the story we're being told in the movie, like May 1st is like when the hotel opens. Um, but then again, the other day in one of these videos, I found that it was, no, it's not May 1st, it's May 20th. So, but I mean, Jack says May 1st when he's having his big showdown with Wendy, um, near the later part of the movie. So like, take it for what it's worth, right? And by the way, May, whether it's May 1st or May 20th, it doesn't matter that is in the sun sign astrologically of taurus uh, taurus is the bull okay taurus is the bull so we're gonna get into some bull here um like i said my upcoming video that i th i think is gonna be the big one um is you know i i I hope you're ready. Okay. I don't know if I should talk it up this much because it might be a huge disappointment, but never mind. Let me do my church announcements and then let's get into it. I've got 152 slides today. Okay. And this is a really interesting part of the movie because it's kind of nonsensical or at least it seems that way. Stanley's doing a number on us again. I don't know what number it is this time. Is it seven? Is it 237? Is it... <laughs> Is it, I don't know, but he's doing a number on us this time. Let me get my church announcements out the way. Uh, returning viewers, thank you for returning. New viewers, thank you for being new. Subscribers, for all 441 of you, thank you for subscribing. Um, I appreciate you all, all of you, all you commenters and everybody. Uh, and please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you know of anybody who might be interested in my nonsense let them know let them know about this um you know however you want to do again i i've been kind of at wit's end lately and that's maybe why i'm making so many videos because i just need to maybe i'm using these as an outlet of some kind um let me just leave it at that so yeah don't forget to like comment subscribe share yeah i've got my big one the big one coming this week and i'm gonna have to do a slide presentation for it by the way you guys by the way people 
I'm going to have to do to, to illustrate to you what I'm talking about. I've already explained it to Tankard. He promised me he wouldn't tell anybody. And so far, I haven't seen any signs of anybody knowing about it. Um, so, but if I'm right about this, like, Jesus, Eugene Christ, um, this might just bust the whole thing wide open. Okay. So, you know. Um, yeah. So anyway, I got script slug. I can't, I can never pronounce this. Script slug. Uh, all queued up to where we are in the Colorado lands with Jack and Wendy. Okay. So if we need it, it's there. Not a lot of dialogue in this part of the movie. After that Colorado lounge nighttime scene, like not a lot of dialogue. And you're, you're about to see like Jack losing his friggin' mind. In the quietest way possible. Yeah, I think you know what part of the movie I'm talking about. The one where he's just, like, glaring into space. Um, anyway, so let's get into it. Here we are. Here he is. This is where we left off last time. He's telling Wendy, you know, that she's bothering him. And that when he's in there, he's working. Yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, that, you know, they're going to make a new rule, or he's going to make a new rule, that he said we, like an asshole. Um, we're going to make a new rule. When he, when, whenever I'm in here and you hear me typing, or you don't hear me typing, or whatever the fuck you hear me doing, don't come in. Is that what he says? Hold on. Let me see. Scripts, scripts, like, yeah, there it is. Fine. Now we're going to make a new rule. Whenever I'm in here and you hear me typing, and then he makes the typing noises on the typewriter. Or whether you don't hear me typing. Whatever the fuck you hear me doing in here. When I'm in here, that means that I am working. That means don't come in. Now, do you think you can handle that? Oh, my God. He deserved, like, that character. Jack Torrance. He, did, he deserves a good open-handed slap in the face for talking that way to his, to his wife, the mother of his children child danny um mm -mm, no and you know recently i think uh, jack nicholson celebrated his what was it his 85th birthday mm. so when he was doing this he's 85 now so that was what 45 years ago uh <laughs> so he was about 40 when he did this movie he looks older for some reason i don't know why but you know nobody could have done this part the way he did absolutely nobody so anyway that's that's what he tells her and wendy says yes and then he says fine why don't you start right now and get the fuck out of here hmm and wendy says okay and then she leaves and then you know he starts to type and what we're gonna we're gonna see that part uh today and several days are gonna go by in this particular um portion of the movie that i'm doing um Let's see. So this, let me, let me get back to this here. Okay. So here he is being, being a raging asshole, raging, 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 deep, dark, cavernous asshole. Um, I'm just going to go. And I want, I took so many screenshots of Jack Nicholson's face because Stanley did. Okay. Stanley basically told us to focus when he did this scene, he's like, focus on, on Jack's face. Focus on all of these, look at him, all these facial expressions. And this is the second part of his rant. He starts out okay, you know, in my, in my part 15. He starts out actually polite, you know, and I think there's a reason for that. But I don't know. I have so many, like, I don't know what to think, really. Like, this might be... Jack, look at look at this. This is this. He's unhinged. Um, this is this is Jack losing his shit, and I don't. Okay, I'm gonna explain more in the upcoming video. I promise you, because that's why I'm gonna do the video. Like I said, I'm gonna need to make screenshots, and this is gonna be very involved. But I don't think this is really taking place in the world of the movie. I don't think that this event, Jack losing his shit and talking this way to Wendy, I don't think that's actually taking place in the real world of the movie. Um, in Yeah, no. It's, this is something that is being 
possibly imagined by the Wendy character. And by the way, last time I said, oh, what is this? Like, it's supposed to be nighttime, but it looks like the window behind her is, you know, seems to be light coming through it. That's not a window. I just, I figured it out, like, right after I made part six, part 15. This is not a window. This is a wall. And this is the space between the two windows, between the two sets of plaid curtains. I ha I've been reading up on plaid. And then I thought about it, went through the movie again. There's a lot of freaking plaid in this movie. Okay? I don't know why, but there is. And I mean, I, ca I cannot figure out. At this point, my brain is not ready to, like, have any ideas of any kind whatsoever about why there's so much freaking plaid in this movie. Plaid furniture, plaid curtains, plaid, uh, lots and lots of plaid and or checkered clothing. It, you wouldn't believe there's a couple, like a couple, a couple of different kinds of plaid. It, you go ahead and you look it up on the Wikipedia just like I did. I didn't know. I did not know that there's that many kinds of plaid. And I did not know that um, I thought like maybe different patterns of plaid, like different colors or whatever. And we Americans, Amer us, me, we over here in the United States, we call it plaid. Across the pond, they call it tartan. T-A-R-T-A-N, tartan. Um, and basically I thought that like a different pattern or different sets of colors are belong to different groups of people or I did the different like yeah different groups of people different communities wear their own special color of plaid no I mean yeah but that's like an invented tradition that's not a real thing um and plaid originally comes from possibly the reason that it's called tartan t-a-r-t-a-n is because it comes from tartaria okay now, if you want to go ahead and look that up, you go ahead. I, and I looked that up and I, I read all of that, but I'm still stumped regarding the plaid. And I'm, ex I'm, I'm, I'm especially curious about it because there's so much of it in this movie. Just like, you know, it's just as ubiquitous as the color red. It's just as ubiquitous as his, like the, his his interesting Stanley's very unique and very interesting way of using light, um, and I'm gonna have to check for the uh, Lynchian connections. Yes, I am, but you know. Anyway, so that's not a window. That's the wall behind her. But these two sets of curtains do a great job framing Wendy or Shelley Duvall's head in this scene. Now he he's a complete jerk to her, and he says, you know. You get the fuck out of here, et cetera, et cetera. And there's her face just, oh, she's, she's so sad. She's so sad. You know, and again, I think in part 50, I think I titled it. Hold on. Let me take a look. Oh, part 15. Where's part 15? Oh yeah. Why is Wendy so surprised? That's what I said. Why is she so surprised? She, I mean, he, he dislocated a small child's shoulder. In the book, he beat up a teenage boy almost to death. And that's why they ran away from Vermont. In the book, that is. Not in the movie. Uh, and Stanley doesn't tell us that about the family in the movie for a reason. He Because he doesn't want us to know. That's why he doesn't tell us. He doesn't give us any indication. Does he expect his viewer to have watched the... the no. Does he expect his viewer to have read the book? I don't know. I don't know. And in my opinion, this is just my opinion, like everything else, that would be very unfair of him to expect us, the viewers, to do that kind of homework just so we can watch a movie for 144 minutes or whatever. Nah, I, I don't think he... Because like sometimes people, like when they're analyzing this movie, they go really, really, really far out. And I can see why. I go pretty far out too. But sometimes I'm like, did he really expect that of his audience? Even those of us who are like nuts, you know, 
did he really expect us to research it that or research individual things ideas whatever did he did he expect any of us to research those things that deeply personally i doubt it yes he put stuff in there <sighs> and that's why that's kind of what what i base my my research on or my analysis on what is reasonable because There's reasonable and then there's unreasonable. And the problem with this movie, and this is why I think so many people get, get down the rabbit hole so deeply, it's hard to determine what's reasonable and what's unreasonable to research or, or the connections that you make or whatever. Y'all let me know in the comments. You know, I, I'm very open to criticism as long as it's constructive criticism and as long as you're not a jerk when you tell me that you don't agree with me. That's all. That's all I ask for. But anyway, she's, her head is framed and is framed with plaid curtains, which again, I told y'all, I think I've told y'all in pre previous videos, this hotel is decorated like very uh, horribly. That like, who you know, whoever their decorator is at the Overlook has no taste at all whatsoever, even for even, yes, even for the late 1970s. Like, no, this place looks like it was furnished um, with materials from the swap meet, these curtains, those, those couches that looks like, you know, a, a whole, like a herd, they brought in a herd of preschoolers and those little, little kids were just jumping up and down on the couches all day and all night long, having the perfectly marvelous time. Um, God, <laughs> you fucking up all the furniture. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> That's what those couches in the Colorado lounge look like to me. Like some kids just say, oh my God, this is going to be fun. And they just got on there with their shoes on and just went boom, 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 all over, all over those couches. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. And anyway, <laughs> okay. So, D I mean, Danny rides his tricycle through here, so, you know. Uh, I don't think he's responsible for all the wear and tear on those couches. He just got there. But, yeah, this place looks cheap. Cheap. And if I'm right about the Overlook Hotel being a specialty resort, let me just put it that way. <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, then, of course, it's cheap looking. My God, of course, they're not that concerned with how the decor looks, the furniture and the whatever, and those dry ass looking fake potted plants and, and what have you. But because it's a, it's, it's a house of ill repute. It's not supposed to look fancy. Like, especially, like, that's, oh, Lord, I'm having all kinds of ideas right now as I speak to you. Um, room 237 is just gross. When we see it finally from the inside, when Jack goes in there, that place looks like the cheapest, nastiest, sleaziest, grossest, gross, fucking like Motel 6, like ni late 1970s Motel 6 in, in some seedy ass place in Las Vegas or maybe not even in Las Vegas, but like a suburb of Las Vegas. Like, ew, gross. It looks like some nasty shit has happened in there. You know what I mean? Like if you, if you, in room 237, if you went in there with one of those blue lights. Oh my god, no. Fuck that shit, no. Gross. I would have to disinfect everything. I would bring my own Lysol, my own bleach, my own lemon pledge. Uh, lots and lots of, um, sanitary wipes. Um, can sanitizer. Like, forget COVID. I'm not afraid of COVID. I'm afraid of that room. In room 237. <laughs> I could just, you could just smell the gonorrhea in there. Ew. Like through the screen. <laughs> oh, good lord. I'm so sorry about that. But anyway, so yeah, Wendy's just... She looks like she's just... She just doesn't know what to think. And she's so sad, like, Wendy, you know this man. You had a child with him. You should have expected this. Like, why, you knew, you should have done, you should have been known, as they say. You should have been known. He was crazy. And, and an asshole and, and a, and a walking, talking human piece of shit, Wendy. You knew that. Or you should have. You should have. And here he is again. Oof. 
see, seething, more or less. And I told you about this thing behind his head on this chair. Seven petals. And yes, they look awfully phallic. Okay. Ugh, Lord. And here he is. And he's telling her to get the fuck up on out of there. Look at him. Ugh. Nobody but Jack Nicholson. Nobody but Jack Nicholson. Um, and then, oh, look at this. And in, in these, all of these shots of his head, you can almost always, or at least partially, see that sconce that I showed you in the other video that, you know, this, he's just carried this over from 2001, A Space Odyssey. And I, I haven't seen Barry Lyndon, but I wouldn't be surprised if they had light, not lighting fixtures because they're dealing with a world without electricity in Barry Lyndon, but like these kind of, um, candles in, in the, on the set in the, in the, in the buildings or whatever in that movie. So here he is. Yeah. Telling her to get the fuck up on out of there. Oh, look, oh, look at this one. Ooh, Lord. Uh, and this is another reason why I'm doing my videos, the understanding, the shining series, the way that I'm doing it. Let me go through that set again. There she is just crestfallen. And there he is. Boop, 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 boop. The whoop so animated so and he just did the most and i guess that's what the role calls for you know um nobody could do this but jack nicholson he happens to be a taurus and like yeah he just celebrated his birthday i think this past week um so here here we are we yeah, are with this this light in the background and what why is it why is stanley showing us this close-up uh jack nicholson and this light over here right i'm th i'm starting to worry not worry but wonder about that like like i said i got my bear i what well, partially got my bear idea from my analysis of the lobby and those columns with disease um and i talked about like winnie the pooh right and then later when i was looking at the kitchen scene she's opening the big ass can of fruit cocktail and I saw the ladles and I said, okay, Ursa, Ursa, Big Dipper, Big Dipper, Little Dipper, don't matter what kind of dipper, Ursa. Both of them are named Ursa Major, Ursa Minor. Ursa means bear, the female form of the word bear in Latin. Okay? So, yeah, Wendy is the bear. Wendy's the bear, not Jack. Wendy. And for years I wondered about that. Anyway, let's keep it moving. So she's, you know, he tells her to get out and she says, okay. And then she starts off, right? And everything is where it's supposed to be at this point in the Colorado Lounge. We got all the lamps. We got all the rugs. I think there's the bear rug over here. No fireplace. I mean, no fire in the fireplace, but all these indirect lights. Like I said, indirect lights <laughs> found out from my, from my cocaine psychosis video, where does the snow come from? Um, I did not know that cokeheads do not like direct light. I did not know that. But look, I mean, it makes sense now, don't it? So now she's turning around. Yeah. And she's turning around again and going away. It's going, going back the same way she came in. Okay. And then we're zooming out. We're zooming out from the desk and we see the torn up papers on the floor. All right, scrapbook, lamp. In front of him is the typewriter. All right. Something's up. Something is up. With the way he did this scene in this room, the Colorado Lounge, at night. He, and this is specifically, he, Stanley was trying to tell us. This is how I feel right now. Look at these shiny ass floors, like I already pointed out. Stanley was trying to tell us, he was trying to let us know, this is the reason he f did this scene, I believe, in this room. He wanted us to pay attention to this. He really, really wanted us to pay attention to this. This room is extremely important. All right. Now, I need to get a better look at this in the daytime shots. But look at the ceiling. Look at these beams. I don't know whether or not they really are red, but they sure look red. 
at least in this lighting. Kind of like the floor of the barracks looks red in Full Metal Jacket. Mm-hmm. We got blood everywhere in Stanley Kubrick movies. You just gotta... You just gotta pay attention. Now, we go, but she's on her way out of the room. Okay. Just same way, same path she took to get the, get to Jack. She's taking the same path to get away from him. Now, I know I can't do that here, or can I? Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on one second. Let me, let me pause for a second. Okay. Yeah. I think I found it. I just pulled up my own video. Didn't want to pull up, um, the, um, slide presentation those things are huge by the way these slide presentations that i do powerpoint presentations ooh, the files that like the powerpoint presentation itself like understanding the shining parts one through now it's going to be 16 take up so much space on my computer i don't know what i'm going to do probably just transfer it to a flash drive i was even thinking about like selling it as a digital kind of download kind of thing. I don't know. But look at this. Okay, so this this big this is the beginning of the scene when Wendy just gets there and she says hello to Jack and whatever. Okay, look at the scrapbook. That's what I want you to pay attention to. The scrapbook and the clippings in the scrapbook. It's hard to see them. It's like hard to see them. I don't know whether or not Stanley does that deliberately. He makes it hard to see them. But it is hard to see them. And then we cut away from them. After a while, we cut away from... Here he is still trying to, like, humor Wendy in the face. Um, but the scrapbook clip, clippings here. Look at these kind of, from our perspective, backwards L-shaped um, newspaper clippings. And now look at this. Mm-hmm. Look at it. Look at this long strip down here. Okay, on, uh, you know, from Jack's perspective, Jack's right-hand side, the right-hand side page of the book. Look at this long strip down here. And then look at this over here. That does not look like a long strip to me. And then to one, two of these on this side. Okay, on this side, well, I this this part where those those are in the previous one looks completely blank. And then we have these two over here. Does it match up to this over here? We can't even see it. You can't see it very well, but you can see it enough to know that they don't match up, which is interesting. Okay, it's very, very interesting. But, <clears throat> but, but the the reason why I show this to you, this is how we find Jack. Okay, chair, table, and other stuff that only Tankard knows about at this point. I will talk to you about it this week, this coming week. I'm gonna do the um reveal i guess uh but yeah this does not look like this it doesn't okay it just uh, and let me look at the length of this paper too before he tears it out oh yeah he's already torn the paper out what am i saying hold up hold up where is it i know it's in my video somewhere Oh, there it is. Okay, so the length of this paper? I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, the part, the, the, the amount of it that's peeking up over the thing. I don't know. Ooh, Stanley is messing with us real good. Real, real good. Basically, I know that, like, the theory that everybody talks about is that this is all a Fig Newton of Wendy's imagination. And this whole thing this whole conversation with jack losing his fucking mind never took place you know or th when he's being mean to her that part is all in her head and like the the beginning part where he's like kind of polite that's the real jack and then you know this this part is not the real jack this is just wendy just you know projecting her poor opinion of him onto him during this scene. I'm here to say, in my opinion, based on what I've been looking at, I don't think any of this, any of this really takes place. I don't think she ever even walks into this room. Mm -mm. I do not, personally. Um, that's my opinion. All right, and... You'll see what I mean when I get to the big one, the, the, the big reveal video. Okay. 
So after Wendy exits the room, or she's on her way out of the room, we cut back to Jack, and the paper is still in the typewriter. Hold on, let me check another thing. When he's being still polite. Okay, this thing, it's slightly over to the right. His right, I mean, not not our right, uh, his right. And then it seems to be slightly over to the left. What is going on? For the love of Pete. Hold on. Now let's check out. We can't, we don't get a good view of the pencils. Damn it. Ugh, whatever. Okay. Anyway, the pencils, the lamp. These, this is a lamp that was on, these kind of lamps were on the end tables before. Okay, and it's been transferred over to this desk. Somehow, for some reason, the lamp is only there in the nighttime. In the daytime, in every other daytime scene in the Colorado Lounge, after the camera walk, the tour given by Stuart Ullman, um, there's no lamp on this desk in the daytime. Just this one nighttime scene. So what do they do with the lamp after he's done with it at night? Do they put it away and only bring it out at night? And by the way, where's the damn cord? Th this movie and their cordless devices. I can't believe it. Anyway, so Jack looks confused. And I'm telling you that even this doesn't take place. Again, Wendy Theory proponents say, okay, Jack, this is the part of the scene where Jack, everything goes back to normal. Wendy's hallucination ends and Jack goes right back to typing whatever he's typing on this typewriter. <clears throat> And this is real. This, what you're looking at, is real. The very beginning is re real when Wendy just walks in. The whole middle part is just Wendy's hallucination. And Jack is just peacefully typing in here. He never yelled at her like that. That's all Wendy's craziness. I'm saying that this, even, even the normal parts, even Jack not being crazy, that also didn't take place. Nothing you see... Yeah, this is not a spoiler for my upcoming um, big video. <sighs> Nothing that you see in the Colorado Lounge that takes, that you, let me, oh, let me try that again. Nothing that you see taking place in the Colorado Lounge in this movie, in my opinion, at this point, none of what you see in the Colorado Lounge actually really takes place in the world of the movie. That is what I believe. This is a room of complete fantasy, complete fakery, complete um, fabrication. That is what I believe. And here he is typing away peacefully like nothing happened, like he never just, you know, told his wife to get the fuck up on out of there. Um, he didn't treat her like a piece of shit. They didn't have an argument. They didn't have any kind of words. Nothing. And again, look at these damn sconces. They're everywhere. Everywhere. Okay, and he goes right back to typing like nothing just happened or Wendy just came came in. And I know the Wendy Theory video says, oh, um, the reason Jack looks like this is because nothing happened. And maybe Wendy just came in there and just stood next to him and didn't say a word that whole time. And everything we saw was just in her head. No, I think nothing that happens in this room or nothing that we see happen in this room actually really happens in the movie. I also feel the same way about room 237. Long pause. <laughs> Long pause. I, I mean, that's the best I can do to artic articulate my position to you at this point. Okay. But here he is. He's gone back to typing all work and no play. Make Jack a dull, dull boy. Okay. Just go, goes right back to typing. <laughs> all of that. You know? Okay. All right. And then after this scene, and I told you, scrapbook does not match the scrapbook at the beginning of this scene. That should tell you something. That should tell us something. Like, what did he do in the middle of all that yelling? He had, he had the time to turn the pages of this thing? I doubt it. 
I doubt it. And again, I'll tell you more when I get to the big video, but I got to get through this one before I can do the next one. And the next one, like I said, it will require a screen, uh, a slide presentation as well. You might never be the same again. I'm just saying. Okay. And after this Thursday, all right, what day was it? Hold up. I got to check on this too. Let me see. Let me skip around. Come on now. Come on now. What day of the week is it when Wendy's opening that big ass can of um fruit cocktail? You know what, actually? While I'm doing since I'm doing this, let's let's let me just pause and find it for you. I think I owe it to you for wasting all of your time like this. I owe it to you to look it up. Hold on one second. Okay, so I looked it up, you guys. I looked at my copy of the movie here that I have on my on my um, computer, and it was Tuesday, the day when she was opening the big ass can of fruit cocktail, and the day that um, Danny rides past room two thirty seven, and the day of this, you know, this scene in the Colorado Lounge at night. Tuesday, 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 Tuesday. All right. And then all of a sudden after this, all of a sudden it's Thursday. So we skipped today. I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to address that as well. These days of the week things, um, in this movie. So Tuesday, everything's fine, except Danny tries to go into the Colorado, I'm um, not the Colorado lounge, but the room 237. Okay. That's Tuesday, Tuesday. And all of a sudden, after this, in the Colorado, okay, now it's Thursday. So what happens on Thursday? Remember, don't forget, when Wendy comes in here and she, she kisses Jack and she says, Hi, Han. Um, she tells him, the weather report says it's going to snow the di snow tonight. Wait, where's my, um, where's my script slug? Hold up. Oh, yeah, here it is. Uh, the weather forecast said it's going to snow tonight. Tonight. Okay. So we go from a completely snowless environment, not one single flake of snow, to it's going to snow tonight. And that when she says that it's Tuesday. And then this conversation, this whatever happens on Tuesday. And then all of a sudden it's Thursday. Okay. And on Thursday, well... <sighs> So Tuesday night, okay, Tuesday night slash Wednesday morning, right, is snowed. It snowed. And boy, did it. You know, the weather report said it's going to snow. My goodness, they weren't kidding, were they? Now, I know that snow can come on and, and it can drop a lot. And, you know, you wake up and there's snow outside. I know that that is possible. But like this? Again, my snowbirds, you know, that's what we call people down south over here um, <laughs> who come down to California like they have a little bit of money and they live in places where it's very cold in the winter. So if they have a little bit of money, they have a place down here where they come and escape winter. Um, and those we call those people snowbirds. OK, um, <laughs> I don't know if you knew that, but now you do. Uh, we're, like, especially they love the desert for some reason. I guess it's because it's com the complete opposite of freezing weather. Like, the, de the desert is scalding weather. I've been to the desert in January. It is hot. It is hot. And, oh, Lord. Anyway. So this is, like, one and a half days worth of snow. Can you tell me, snowbirds? Is this one and a half days worth of snow? Like, this much? white everywhere you can't see anything there's like no visibility like this little post sticking up out of the snow is like what what's going on and there this is um wendy and danny running and playing in the snow having a marvelous time by the way where's the maze i know they're like technically in front of where the maze should be but still yeah still um there they are run and uh, my question is Again, I don't know Jack, pun intended. I don't know Jack about snow, but I know that when the snow looks like this outside, that your feet should 
be sinking into it. You know what I mean? Like, where are their snowshoes? They're just wearing ordinary footwear. Why, why are there, you know, if this is actual snow, I mean, it's not actual snow, it's movie snow, but snow is pretty well known for, like, you sink into it. Like, we've, I, even if you're not from a snowy place, you've seen those videos on Instagram or whatever of some adorable dog, like, running outside when it's, when, when it's been snowing and they just sink right into the snow. <sighs> okay. This is where the garage is. So they run it past the garage. Wendy's wearing red again and blue. I don't know what's going on with her feet, but red up here, blue down here. All right, and they're running and playing in the snow. There's that snow cat. Why is it out there? Why is it there? What is going on with this snow cat? Okay, to me, and, and where is their car, by the, by the way? Like I said, I mean, would they? I have to, I have to like look through the movie again. But like, in their right mind, would they leave their car outside in the snow? Especially snow like this. I would assume no. I would assume, like, they're from New England. They know about snow. So like, they would probably put the car in the garage, right? But anyways, the snow cat's out here, and it's been out here for a little while because there's some snow accumulated on it, too. Is somebody, like, thinking about leaving? Is somebody, you know, I don't know who at this point. Is Jack that's thinking about leaving? Or is it Wendy that's thinking about, like, trying to get out, trying to get away from the hotel or the family or whatever with the snow cat? I have no idea. Look at this pile of snow in the corner of this external part of the building. Like, well, one and a half days. One and a half days. Big ass pile of snow here. Okay. But somehow she can walk across it without her feet sinking in up to her knees. Like, really? Okay. Again, I'm from Los Angeles. I don't know. All right. But they're hanging out. They're playing in the snow. Okay, so this is not where the Torrance's apartment is. Yes, the Torrance apartment faces this, is on this side of the building. Okay, and they're playing, they're hanging out, they're having a great time, I guess. Right, and now here, here we're getting closer to, and look at this, this, this part is even worse than this over here. Like, but... It can accumulate, it's it's built up so high and so thick up against the building, but on the ground? Oh no, it's very easy to walk through. Like, really? Again, y'all tell me, How does it, is this how it happens? I don't know. I, c I barely know rain. Like, don't even ask me about snow. Um, so, I think the Torrance's apartment, the bathroom window is like right here. Okay? Yeah, I think it's like, yeah. So when Danny does slide down, he slides down here from this window. So the Torrances are on the second floor of this, I guess, wing of the hotel. I don't know. Right? And then he's got all this snow to slide down uh, when he wiggles his way through that window when Wendy pushes him through. And they're throwing snow at each other. Okay, cool. Um, Whatever. Like, really, whatever. I, the reason I keep asking you all about the snow is I don't, even though I'm not familiar with it, I don't see it acting like this. I don't think this is normal. Um, and I think that Stanley would expect at least, a, at least a good portion of his audience to be familiar with the way snow works. He would be familiar with the way snow works because he's from New York. He's from, what is it, the Bronx? Like, it does snow there. And the winters can be very bad. Um, so he knows snow, too. This is illogical. To me, anyway. That's just me. Okay. And now, we go from this shot of this illogical-looking snow, in my opinion. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm waiting for it in the comments. Let me know. And we go from that to this. Okay, remember this? 
remember this and again i can't trust my eyes with regard to this part of the or any part of the movie with regard to the colors because like i said my copy of the movie that i use on this computer that tennis ball is pink in the hallway in front of room 237 so i'm saying that because of this sweater he's wearing it looks black but if you can check for me or if you want to just check for your own curiosity i definitely encourage that too um is this black or is it more like a green color i might check but you all go ahead and let me know if you check before i get a chance to i don't know this looks like it might be a like a dark a very dark green but let me know there's a fire going in the fireplace and oh my lord jesus hold on now uh i was at the <laughs> you're gonna laugh i was at the supermarket today i had to pick up some things got a chicken made some chicken soup it was delicious okay and i wanted to do like a nice chicken soup leftovers i got you know those dry ass chicken breasts I'm gonna save those for salad tomorrow but <clears throat> i was <laughs> i was all done with my purchase and I was uh, walking with my cart to the exit and they have like fire logs for the fireplace <laughs> and they sell it like right next to the charcoal and the barbecue stuff this is Southern California so um, they they have these fire logs and I think it was in, in boxes like you could get them in boxes and on my way to the exit I needed a couple bags of ice because my refrigerator does not make ice and I like ice drinks all year round no matter how hot or cold it is I need to have a nice cold drink and I saw this box and it was firewood and it's probably not real like not real actual um wood it said hot wood <laughs> on the box and I even took a picture I said should I share this on my community post I don't know but I just thought, what a peculiar thing to name um, a brand of, of firewood. Hot wood, y'all. Anyway, so here's the fireplace behind um, Jack. There's his desk. As you can see, no lamp. The scrapbook is still there, and it's open. So, like I said, this guy is just the worst writer on planet Earth. He has this glass full of pencils and pens and what have you. He's got a typewriter. He's got the scrapbook. Where is his notepad? I'm sorry. That's just how people used to do it back in the day. Before computers and before Microsoft Word and whatever that's how we did it we would at least write an outline at least write a couple of notes to get you going whether you're doing a school report or whatever else or even a letter if you're writing somebody a letter you don't just go and type out of nowhere no you get a piece because like and and the reason is for those of you who are young out there like why wouldn't you just sit down and just type and if you make a mistake like just crumple up the paper and throw it out because like the typewriter it needs ink okay just like the printers nowadays and like if you just type 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 your machine's gonna run out of ink and then you gotta put a new ribbon in there and like oh my god okay whether your typewriter is is not electric like this one or you have an electric typewriter i had an electric one you gotta worry about that ink that's why you don't, you know, that's why you make notes first. At least that's what I did, you know. And he's got this. And let me check, like, while we're at it. Like, let me check. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Well, how did I miss this? Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I can get a good picture of it. Looks like I'm going to have to go back to my uh, video here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hey, there it is. So we, when we, I'm going to try and find the um thing where we first encounter jack in this room yeah do you guys see like a box of paper anywhere i know i don't okay where's i mean where is he pulling this paper out of his ass where's the paper 
like we see a box full of his typewritten pages later on in the movie when Wendy finds them and she like loses her shit when she's reading all work and no play make Jack a dull boy over and over and over and over and over again over so and she finds that box full of those pages that have already been typed but where's the box of blank paper <clears throat> I'll wait. <laughs> I'll be waiting forever and ever and ever, won't I? But yeah, like that always struck me as odd. Where is his paper? There's no drawers on this table. There's like no place for him to keep like a ream of paper or whatever it's called. Or like just a box of paper. No, this this paper that he loads into his typewriter just like... It, it, it comes from like thin air. Again, maybe his ass. I don't know. That makes no sense at all to to me whatsoever. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Um. Anyway, back to the snow day. Okay, that's one hell of a snow day too. Like, ooh, lord. And again, this is their window. This is their bathroom window over here. And here's Jack. Ugh. What the hell? What the hell? And again, scrapbook, typewriter. I don't know what's going on here. The glass with the pens and pencils in it. The sconce is lit. There's a moose. I think that's a moose. Is that a moose or an elk? Y'all let me know. Um. And the fire behind him. And he's just standing there. And Stanley makes a point. A very... Very, 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 and I can't do it justice with these slides of mine, but he very, 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 very slowly zooms in on Jack's face. And you can see like the subtle movements in his face. He he does a pretty good job of keeping his face frozen like that. I guess pun intended. Um with this sequence here where he just very very slowly with this really ominous freaking music playing in the movie uh zooming in on on jack nicholson's face see he see his his eyebrows just moved very slightly um and his mouth is slightly open he's looking at um whatever he's looking at through the window i guess of the colorado lounge uh, up under his eyebrows like so he's looking like this, where is he looking up? What is he looking at? And everybody who watches this movie comments on the absolute, like, deep, deep, dark creepiness of this scene. Like, what is going on? I'll do it again. I'll do it again. So we go from this to this, and then slowly, 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 slowly zooming in on... Uh, Jack Torrance's face. Mm -mm. And everybody who sees this movie is like, no, this is not okay. This behavior is not okay. This is him being evil. This is him thinking about killing them. This is him like, you know, why does he look slightly happy? Like, I think I already told you why. Okay, in my which video was it? Hold on. Uh, yeah, this one. Uh, the Shining. Film analysis, The Shining. Where does all that snow come from? I told you why. This is... I mean, how much coke has he, has he hoovered up his nose to get him to this point of, like, more or less catatonia? You know? Um... And he's on his feet. I don't think he's sitting down. He doesn't seem... Yeah, let me see. Is he sitting down? He seems to be... Yeah, he seems to be on his feet. He's not... No, he's not in a chair. He's not reclining. He's not sat down. He's standing on his feet doing this. The, he is stoned or wasted out of his mind. And again, is this yet another swipe at Stevie the Snowman? Is this, is this Stanley once again saying, like, yeah, this is what he really does in his, in his office where he quote-unquote writes. 
I'm just saying. And again, this is what we were, you know, again, everything that here, that was Tuesday, that we jump over to Thursday. Thursday, we have all this snow and we have jacked, Jack going, cr losing his mind or, or having some kind of psychotic episode, in my opinion, possibly after doing way too much coke. Okay, here he is. And then all of a sudden, boom, Saturday. Okay, so we skipped today. We went from Tuesday to Thursday, and now we've gone from Thursday to Saturday. So Wednesday and Friday, I mean, whatever happens on Wednesday and Friday, I guess it's none of our business. That's why Stanley doesn't show us. But, okay, so here it is, Saturday, okay? Um, ooh, that's a lot of snow. And again, we couldn't see the maze before. And now we for sure could, can't see it. But we should be able to see it because of the shots later on in the movie of the maze. The maze is clearly visible. Like everything is deeply buried in snow except for that maze later on in the movie. Where is it at? Where? I would love to know. And he lingers on this external shot for a little while. Okay, and then after that, like, okay, we go from this to Saturday to this. This is Saturday now. I need to do a Days of the Week video, and I need to do a food video. And, oh, I need I need to do so many videos to figure this thing out. Now, and then we go out here, okay? What did I say? Saturday, snow, 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 and then, boom, interior shot, chandelier still not on, indirect lights, whatever. The lights upstairs on this, I, I'll just call it a mezzanine because I don't know what to call it. And there he is. I don't know what he's wearing. I've tried to enlarge this, um, what'd you call it? Um, this, this, this shot, this part of the movie, I've tried to enlarge it so I could see what he's wearing. Um, I can't do it. It's hard. It's, he's so tiny in this shot and it doesn't get bigger. I did like a couple. Oh yeah. Let's see. Two, three, four, five. I did six of these and they're all the same except the flames in the, in the fireplace are the only things that really move noticeably from this distance. Um, yeah. And you can't see, you cannot make out what he's wearing. You cannot make out what he's wearing. Sconces are switched on. The chandeliers in the hallway behind him and upstairs are switched on. Fireplaces, there's a roaring fire in the fireplace. Okay. All of the rugs are where they're supposed to be. All of this furniture over here is where it's supposed to be. Uh, bear rug. Oh, dear. People have always wondered about this bear rug. I think it represents Wendy at this point in some way. Not sure how, but I think it does. Um, okay. And I'm here to tell you once again, I told you that whatever happens in the Colorado Lounge, in my opinion, based on how I feel right now, whatever you see in this movie happen in the Colorado, Colorado Lounge isn't really happening. And I see what I need to see in this shot, even though I can't see what he's wearing. And I'm going to reveal it to you in my upcoming video. I see what I need to see in order for me to help me determine that what we're seeing in this shot right now here is not really happening. Okay. And that's that. Um, as far as I'm concerned right now. Also, let me also um, point something out to you. So where is room 237? Um, go upstairs. Okay, you can use the elevator, or you can use the stairs over here, uh, you know, behind this, you know, to the left over here behind this wall. Or, yeah, so go to take the elevator upstairs, get up here, move, walk this way, and then when you get to this entrance over here where I'm, I'm moving my cursor, you get in there, and then you turn re right. It would be from this perspective to your right. Room 237 is on the other side of this wall. Okay, there's a hallway. Okay, there's this wall. And then there's the rooms on this side of the hallway. That the, the side, the wall facing us. Yes, these are rooms. On Across the hall from room 237, the rooms that we see 
across the hall from room 237. These are the walls of those rooms. This whole thing here. Did you hear me? <laughs> That's I, I I mapped it out. I I and I don't know how to transfer that or illustrate that to you in any of these videos because I don't have those kind of skills. But just take I mean if you want to go ahead and take my word for it. These are the walls of the rooms across the hall from room 237. Uh the walls of those rooms that are that are opposite of the entry doors to those rooms the rooms across the hall for room 237 so yeah take the take the elevator walk this way turn right room 2 and when you turn right room 237 would be on your left and there's another elevator by the way when you go when you go through here you're going to find another elevator i don't know why there's an elevator over here why do they need another one back there i don't know seems like a little too much for me but then again what do i know um anyway so yeah room 237 is behind be behind this okay so there's a row of rooms a hallway and then room 237. i wanted to point that out to you and also that couch is missing that lamp those lamps um are missing Something's wrong. I mean, you know that already. That's why you're here. But so, something is W R O N G wrong. So I don't know what it is. I'm trying to figure it out. I am trying to figure it out. It's not easy to figure out. Um, I'm doing my best. So anyway, yeah, so he's allegedly typing in here. And I say that, you know why I say that, because I don't believe that he really is typing. I don't believe that he's doing any writing in this room. And when he says, let me go back a couple of slides, when he, a couple, like a lot, not just a couple, um, when he loses his shit and he's all mean and nasty to Wendy, there he is. I think that's a great one. When he's all mean and nasty to Wendy, um, he says to her, where does it say? Let me go back to scripts below. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, you're distracting me, and it will then take me time to get back to where I was, understand? And she says, yes. And he says, fine, now we're going to make a new rule. Whenever I'm in here and you hear me typing, or whether you don't hear me typing, whatever the fuck you hear me doing in here, when I am in here, that means that I am working. That means don't come in. Now, do you think you can handle that? This is basically the same thing that Dick Halloran told Danny during the ice cream conversation in the kitchen uh he says to him you ain't got no business going into room 237 and you know stay out stay out so this is jack's version of stay out stay out except he's not saying it to danny he's saying it to wendy whatever it is and she, he says if you hear me typing or you don't hear me typing it, whatever the fuck you hear me doing in here when i'm in, in here that means i'm working that means don't come in stay out stay out so whatever he's doing in there he doesn't want wendy to know about it he doesn't want wendy to see it and if he's just typing even if he is typing over and over and over again the same line page after page after page after page Like, that doesn't seem like weird enough. I know that sounds crazy to, for, coming from me, but that still doesn't seem like enough for him to not want her to see him typing that. It's got to be worse. It's got to be worse than that. It's got to be worse than that. Maybe the old work and no play. I mean, maybe it just doesn't exist, period. But it's a metaphor for something else. So he's working, he's working, but we don't know what kind of work it is. 
if I'm right about the source of the snow in this movie, I mean, maybe that's what his real job is. This is maybe some kind of stop-off place, or maybe this is some kind of storage area for cocaine. And his job is to just keep an eye on the place, make sure that nobody comes in and nothing gets stolen and whatever. Because, yeah, they have bad winters. Once again, we're not in winter yet in this part of the root movie. If we're going to follow their their alleged timeline, it's still November. Okay, November is not winter. There shouldn't be that much snow. Yet. Maybe December, maybe January, maybe February, yeah. But not November, not early November. They're real, they're, this is like a freak what we see in this movie this is like a freak snowstorm this is too much this is like way 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 too much snow for like a day a, this is one day of snow really okay i'm telling you this snow is a metaphor for cocaine and that's what he's really doing in there he he's doing something or you know guarding it or you know keeping track of it or maybe you know Maybe that's why the snow cat is, um, where is the damn thing? Yeah, there it is in the background. You can hardly see it, but it is there. Um, maybe that's why he needs the snow cat so he can make deliveries even in bad weather. I don't know. I really don't know, but something is not right here. Something is not right. I sound like an old person. I think they, they all old people think that everything is drugs. I don't know. But um Y'all tell me. Anyway, like I said, room two thirty seven is in the hallway behind this wall with the fire the wall with the fireplace and this Native American artwork. Mm. And that couch is missing. That couch after that day when Jack is bouncing the ball off of this here um that's the last we see of that couch where did it go we don't see it ever again they get rid of it somehow or maybe that's our cue that like after after that scene after the couch is gone nothing that happens in this room is real but then again i like i said i'm gonna i'm gonna go through as much as I possibly can, probably all of it, uh, regarding the, this room and some other rooms too, um, in my upcoming big, big video. Okay. Again, stay tuned. Anyway, moving on. I think I said everything like this, this scene, this scene, this scene after this. Okay. What was it? Saturday. First we see this, then it's Saturday. And like I said, this happens on a Thursday. And then we hop over to Saturday, and then we see all the snow. And then we see, like, a couple of seconds of just this. Just Stanley focusing on this room. Okay. And Jack allegedly writing or typing or whatever. And, and he does this in such a way so that you are not able to see what is on this table. You are not able to see what he's wearing or you, you can't even make out his face. You can't even really tell whether or not that's Jack. We just assume. I mean, what else? Who else could it be? But like, I'm, but like, he's not interested in showcasing Jack here. He's just showing Jack allegedly typing, with the fire going. Couch missing. And some other shit going on that I will point out to you. Um in the upcoming video okay he does that for a little while as you can see the flames are moving that's how you know that I'm switching the slides anyway after this scene that's all I have to say about this Stanley puts it here for a reason it if you cut this out of the movie it's literally a couple of seconds but if you cut this out of the movie most people it would they they wouldn't care right uh, uh, no, this is necessary. For some reason, he put it here, that means it's necessary. 
but we need to figure out why. Again, maybe this is another cue, if I'm right, that what we're seeing in this room doesn't really happen, or that argument, or, you know, him telling Wendy off, that that didn't really happen, um, or that nothing in this room that we see in the movie actually really happens in the world of the movie. So we go from this to this, the infamous ice cream um, thing, okay? And she's at the switchboard trying to get through to somebody. I don't know why, she, like, did she try the phone first? Do they have phones at this place? What kind of freaking place is this where she can't just go and pick up a phone? I don't know. And then we have the upside down horseshoe here. I don't know what this means. I haven't researched it, but are they good luck? I think they're supposed to be good luck. And if they are good luck, like why is it, why is it in the telephone room? In the switchboard room? Like they have a switchboard. Ay ay ay. I don't know what to think about that. Like I really don't know. Um what to think about that. Okay. But she's trying to get through to somebody. For some reason, she's trying to get through to somebody. We never find out why she's trying to get through to somebody. We know if she's trying to call somebody. We never find out who it is that she's trying to call. No. We see her in this garish yellow jacket with the Native American designs on it. There's like a teepee, a red one, on her sleeve. That's the only thing I can really make out. She's wearing those blue jeans again. And sure, her neck is wrapped in a scarf. Like, what the hell? You're indoors. You're not out in the snow. Why is your neck wrapped in a scarf? And, like, I presume, Tankard, I presume that the heater is on, those radiators, you know? If it's, like, that snowy outside, I assume it's also very cold, and I assume that they turn the heater on. But what do I know? She's trying to get through to somebody. And, yes, there's ice cream, there's police, there's fire, there's just this random envelope here. God knows what for. Um, there's She's got her ashtray here. She's got her little cigarette going in here. Um, the horseshoe. These, I guess, telephone directories here on this. Looks like a library cart. Oof. And then we got these pictures on this. I don't know what the hell this is. Like a bulletin board or something. Or no, this is the bulletin board here. But like this over here no clue. And she's getting frustrated. She's trying all the different um, things to plug the thing into. And they're not working. And she's getting frustrated and frustrated and frustrated and whatever. And I'm going through this, right? Just to show you, show you her frustration. And she finally gives up and she grabs her Virginia Slim out of this ashtray over here, right? And she very decisively turns around and exits this. So this is where the telephone room is. Okay, so... Okay, so like on the other side of this wall behind her is, is I guess, the mail slots for each hotel room. All right, and she comes, she comes out of the telephone room and... What the hell is this on the door? On the inside of this room, there's a door. What is that? The chandelier is lit. My God. Let me take a better look at this. So the chandelier above her is lit. This one outside isn't. Okay. So she's walking out. She's going towards this thing here, right? She's walking out into the lobby. There's... um. You know, the restrooms behind her, another chandelier is it. Exit. Really? This is an exit? To where? I told you about Stanley Kubrick and his exit signs. Um, this sconce is not lit. That's interesting. There's this diamond on the flow. Okay. Um, here we go. Telephone booths. Right. Okay. All right. Um, she's walking. Again, this chandelier is not lit either. 
Interesting. Okay, see these plaid chairs? Uh, Tankard, pay attention. I'll do it again. The, I'm, telling ta and t I'm telling Tankard because Tankard already knows. Um, so anyway, pay attention, Tankard, to this sequence. She's walking from over here, 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 here. In, in the DMs, let me know if you see it. I'm not going to say it because I'm getting ready to do my big video. Okay, so none of these chandeliers seem to be lit. All right, none of them. Radiator over here, sconce, not lit. But the but the chandeliers in the hallway behind these um, glass doors are lit. Make that make sense to me. <sighs> the light that sh that's so weird. In the spaces where they need light, they don't put real light or like bright light. No, they always light a space that they're not in. Really? Okay. All right. Okay. So she's walking, walking, walking. And, right, and she's, there's the TV. And the TV's on. Okay, the TV is on. A chandelier's not lit, but the TV's on. And she's already got a pillow um, over here that I guess she kicks back on when she's watching the TV. And what's also interesting is this is where she watches this cordless TV um, in the lobby. And when Danny, later on, when Danny's on the floor playing with his little cars or whatever, these two armchairs are not there. See them? This is where she sits. This is where the TV is. These two armchairs are not there later in that scene. Make of that what you will. Um... <clears throat> Okay, she's moving closer to Ullman's office. This is the scale model of the maze. Interesting. More, you know, radiators all over this lobby. Um, chandeliers not lit. And again, the scale model of this maze also moves throughout the course of the movie. Okay, she's turning. She's coming in to the office area. Okay, she comes in and somebody says, oh yeah, there's like, there's, shouldn't, is it, is it, there should be a light switch here somewhere, right? Well, it's not here. Okay, so here she comes in again, no light switch. Okay, she walks into Ullman's office, which is extremely orange, extremely orange. Um... Does Ullman have a... Oh my god. I'm going to have to check on this. But I can't see it. Again, maybe my eyes are tired. Maybe my glasses are like way too old. But where's his phone? I never noticed that. I never noticed that. Let me let me check on it one second. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. I was trying to find out whether or not Stuart Ullman has the telephone in his office. And yes, he does. It's over here. It's hard to see, but it is over here. Um, <clears throat> because I was wondering about why does he have this radio in his office? That's what I found peculiar. And it's not... By the way, it's not this. There's no. There was never any light switch here. Um, it's about. It's not about that light switch. It's about this light switch over here. There's a door that you can't see for some reason. He doesn't show us the door <clears throat> in this scene, but there's a door over off camera, and there's a light switch next to the door. And in the interview scene where Jack is interviewed in this room by Stuart Ullman, there's a light switch next to a door and in this scene I guess oh wait a minute hold on there it is okay you guys are gonna have to help me like what light switch are we talking about because on the interview on the day of the interview there's no light switch here and now I'm finding out um, there is a light switch here just like on the day of the interview so like what light switch are you guys talking about I must know.
Uh, another thing that I found uh, find odd in this office is never mind that window we know like that window is crazy and plus we know that on the other side of this wall is a hallway so there never there should not be a window here and we also know that on the other side because i pointed it out to you in one of my videos on the other side of this wall there's a hallway and underneath or like right about here at this level on the other side of the wall where the window is there's a radiator so you know go figure but what i'm wondering is where is stuart ullman's name um nameplate on the desk like why would he take that with him or why would he put that away for the winter like why would he hide his name i don't know i just don't know that to me this is peculiar okay um also another thing that's peculiar is we're almost done by the way i've got like one more slide after this this is i get, i get up right up to the point where she's about to contact the forestry service okay so why does Stuart Ullman have a radio that's number one and number two why does he have a map here in his office a huge map a huge framed map on the wall this is a big map look at look at how look at how tall and it's all the way up to the um like ceiling or the shelf above it and it's framed so that means it's important and it means that the person who is usually in this office i guess when the hotel is open and operational that's Stuart Ullman he needs access to a map <clears throat> And, I mean, we need to look at this map. We <laughs> need to... Here's the last shot. We need to... Um, just get a better look at this map. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, this... I can't find out what a map... What kind of map this is. I assume that this is a map of all of the different, maybe, counties in Colorado. I could be wrong. But let me know, you guys, if you already know what what the, this map is for. Maybe I'm maybe the light switch is missing um, in the scene where Jack comes in here and and takes the radio apart. I'm not sure. I haven't checked. But um, why is this big ass map in Elman's office? And why is there a barometer on his wall or like a weather station thing? what is going on what is going on with this crazy office this is insane this is absolutely insane I, it doesn't make sense to me. Why would he have a map of Colorado in the office? I mean, that means he needs to see it. That he mean, means he needs to be aware of whatever it is on this map <clears throat> on a regular basis. He can't just look at a map in a book. Yeah, this this is a time period before the internet existed and Google and Google Maps and what have you. I'm telling you, this place is weird. This place has to do with, <clears throat> again, I think the sex trade and the drug trade. That is my opinion. Have I missed anything? I think that's about it. I think that's about it. <clears throat> and the, like I said, we're ending off right before like wendy's about to contact the forestry service okay that is really interesting to me also you know why can't this radio 
be in the same room where the switchboard is? Why does it have to be in Almond's office? Why does he have to be able to communicate people with people via radio as opposed to just picking up a phone? Again, to me, this is very shady. Very, very shady. Very, very, very suspicious. I don't know what to make of this. I mean, I do, kind of. I have my own little theory that I'm working off of. But, you know, this, creepy as hell. Again, this to me looks like somebody who's like wasted out of their mind. And they're... He's just hovering there. He's on his feet, staring out into space. We get like the impression that he's staring out at um at Wendy and Danny, but that doesn't make sense because look at this. This is the front of the hotel. And this is We presume, we presume that this is the front of the hotel. And <clears throat> if this is the front of the hotel, um, <laughs> I mean, first of all, first of all, the front of the hotel, if it's the lobby, those windows facing outward, if those are the windows facing the maze, then then the Colorado Lounge can't also be facing that same in that same direction. At least it doesn't seem that way to me. That's number one. Number two, if he's looking if he's allegedly looking through the window and just glaring at Wendy and Danny, like how can he see them through all this snow? You know, these windows don't match up with the windows in the Colorado Lounge. You see what I mean? So I think that's the assumption that he's like staring at them maniacally and plotting how he's going to kill them or whatever. How? The windows are all covered in snow. Like how he can't even see them. Like no matter what room he's in, all the snow is up against the the walls, external walls of the hotel, covering uh, covering up all the snow is covering up all these windows. How can he see them? No way in hell. And like I said, why are their feet not sinking into into the snow? If it's packed up this high against the building, then it should be packed up pretty high where they're walking, too. They should have trouble walking through this snow. They they don't. They just, they, 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 they bounce right through it. Uh, I said I need to make a video about these days of the week cards. <clears throat> I'm gonna, for sure, absolutely for sure make a video about let me find it the um this room okay definitely gonna make a video about this room and hopefully we'll figure I, uh, hopefully i'll be able to articulate to you like what is going on what i believe is going on in this in this room so you guys stay tuned for that i th think i've covered everything that i want to cover i'm trying to figure out which one of these to use as my thumbnail um most likely it'll be this picture <laughs> that'll terrify anybody um or maybe who knows i might use shit this picture tankard you know why I'm why I'm showing you this. Um so that's that. That's that you guys. I did it. I think I did it. I think I did it. So this coming week, God willing, okay? Um I've got some stuff coming up, but I'm going to want to talk. I'm going to want to like just vent in the form of shining research. So, you know, um stay tuned for my upcoming video, the big one, right? Where I drop what I believe is the key or possibly one of the keys to unlocking the secrets and the mysteries of this movie. 
Um, going to try and do a full metal jacket installment. We'll see. We'll see. But I couldn't do the video that I want to do without doing this video first. So you guys stay tuned. I don't know how it's going to turn out. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to follow me because I'm not really good at expressing myself, at least not lately. Um, but let me know, you guys. Let me know. Can't wait to read the comments. So please, once again, going to reiterate my church announcements. Returning viewers, thank you for returning new viewers. Thank you for being new and subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, all of you, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share uh, this video or whichever video that you like. Um, it's supposed to be able to help me a lot. I don't know how, but it is. Uh, I hope I did something with this video. I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, so many questions that I hope to be able to answer or I hope to be able to like uh, crack the case in the upcoming video this week. I'm going to have to make another slide presentation because it's complicated. But you guys, um, stay tuned. Don't forget to comment. Let me know what you think. I can't wait. Um, and then, you know, we can go from there. Uh, I'm done for now. I think I've said all, everything I need to say for now. So until next time, you guys, until the next video where I find yet another reason to talk at you, I am going to go ahead and bid you bye-bye. So bye-bye, everybody.